My name is Anna. I'm a cultural manager and um, a, a writer for the daily Ukrainian newspaper The Day. And also I'm a Ukrainian. And I'm not a professional blogger, but I feel like YouTube lacks real life stories from Ukraine. And I'm here to answer your questions if you have any. I have promised myself not to refilm this video, so please forgive if they don't look very professional. Also, I have not prepared any scripts because I'm going to express you the things I am worried about. I'm lucky to live in the west of Ukraine that is not that much under threat if to compare with many Ukrainian cities like Kherson, Kharkiv, Mariupol. But at the same time, when I say that it's not very dangerous in my region, you have to understand that uh, tonight, this morning, very early in the morning, our airport was bombed by a Russian plane and two people died and six people are injured, wounded and now in our hospitals. That's what I mean when I say that I'm on a safe territory. I uh, think that this real life experiences and stories that we have uh, in our local newspapers and websites are important and maybe the world does not know enough about the things that are going on here. And uh, perhaps I will start by answering one of the questions that I often get from my foreign friends is, did we believe something like that was possible? I know that Ukraine was for a very long period of time on the news and uh, CIA, FBI, presidents, EU leaders were talking about the possibility of a full-scale war with Russia, but perhaps um, we did not believe something like that is possible in the 21st century and in the heart of Europe, because Ukraine, I believe now, is the heart of Europe, both geographically and uh, spiritually. Uh, we have war with Russian Federation for eight years when they annexed the Crimea and took the territory of two of our regions, not actually all the regions, but parts of these regions. But anyway, a uh, full-scale war was something we could not predict. And on the 24th of February, uh, we woke up to a very weird sound and heard uh, three blow-ups. And it was in the west of Ukraine. Actually, we are just less than 200 kilometers from Poland. And by saying that, I once again express uh, the fear that Putin can do anything and Europe is also, and NATO countries are also in a serious danger because whatever you think is impossible turns out possible for this insane uh, person. Uh, from what I observe now, it is surprising how quickly uh, people adapt to war and how quickly we change our habits and uh, our emotions and um, well like again telling you that my region is a more or less safe I mean at this minute because I do hear planes flying and as I have already told you two people died this morning um, because of the Russian attack on our airport um, like you get used to things very quickly for example you stop sleeping in a pajama you are ready to run, you know the places you can hide. Uh, I'm a contact lens wearer and my priority rule is to put on my contact lens and um, to check people that you care about, to scroll Facebook. And um, well, like I think that no sane person can believe something like that is happening in the 21st century. And the only thing that makes us feel uh, more calm is the fact that the world sees these crimes, what is happening in Kyiv, what is happening in Kherson, what is happening in Mariupol, what is happening in Ohtirka. But another important message that I would like to share with you is the fact that never have we felt that strong. Ukrainians are very united and here inside we have a joke that Putin has done the most for the formation of a strong and united Ukrainian nation. I am very much proud of our people, of our united armed forces. 
and um, I am ready to answer your questions if you have any. Of course, I will not answer questions, uh, propaganda questions, because like there are lots of foolish things that Russians try to persuade that they kill us to just like demilitarize or whatever. Anyway, there are lots of bullshit that they uh, speak, but we are happy that the world sees it. And the world realizes uh, that Russia and Putin's regime is evil. Nowadays, there are lots of commands who say you don't have to speak about Russians, you have to speak about Putin's regime. But uh, personally, I believe that uh, Putin is the result of uh, Russian cultural worldview, their consciousness. He's actually the product. Uh, many countries, if they are dissatisfied with the politics of their president, somehow react. And uh, Russia and Belarus are examples of dictatorships and very Orwellian society. I hate, like, I respect Orwell and his books and I consider him a genius, but I hated watching films and reading books on that because of that awful atmosphere. And perhaps that's the atmosphere that Russians want to recreate in Ukraine. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to let you know that here I am. I'm not a professional analyst. I'm not a military defense specialist. I'm not a spy yet. <laughs> I'm not a politician. I'm just a person who is eager to speak about her country. I'm very proud of my country. We are all confident that we will win. We are grateful for the support we receive from our partners. Of course, we want more because you cannot believe what is happening uh, here right now, what we see, and I wish you never would. Anyway, please feel free to share, comment, and forgive that I'm not very professional uh, at that. And um, I would like mm, not to speak about that at all. Anyway, Slava Ukraini, thank you guys.